Hey everybody, this is Meyer, and in this video is what I'm going to do is talk about transport controls within your digital audio workstation. So let's talk about what the transport controls are and why they're so effective or essential to navigating your track. So when you're presented with this page for your project, the transport controls actually refer to the window here at the bottom. So let's go into more detail about what this window actually means. So we have a number of buttons here. And the best way to describe this is it's very similar to like a DVD player, if any of you remember those. So there are a lot of different functions, but mostly for navigating your track or transporting yourself around your track, which is hence the name transport controls. So over here we have stop and play, pretty straightforward. We'll stop and play your track with the space bar toggling between pausing and playing your track. You also have jumping to the beginning of your track, which can also be enabled by hitting the comma key on your keyboard by default. You also have the option to record. Now, what this record button does is we'll either record any armed audio track. So if you have an audio track armed, hitting this record button will actually record audio into that audio track. Or if you have a MIDI track armed, it'll record any MIDI information from let's say a MIDI keyboard or an external synthesizer that you've set up. It'll actually record that MIDI information in as well. So depending on which type of track you have armed for recording, it'll either alternate recording audio or MIDI. Then you have your typical rewind and fast forward buttons. So the button kind of to the left rewinds and fast forwards, and then you can also jump these outer buttons. Then you have the activate or deactivate loop function, which basically you can loop a section of your track and play it over and over again, which is really helpful if you're trying to get, let's say a certain chord progression or melody right. You can just loop that section and that way you don't have to keep restarting it to hear it in context again and again. Then you have this button over here, which will enable the metronome. So that way it'll, it's like a click track while you're recording. The, the little wrench icon next to it allows you to edit the metronome. So how loud it is and what type of sound it is. And then over here, you have your time signature and tempo. So if you remember before, when we were creating the project, you had to set your time signature and your tempo. You can actually change those here. So you can type in the tempo and beats per minute and the time signature, which is beats per bar. And then what type of note gets a beat is usually the way that I like to say it. So four, four means there are four beats per bar and one quarter, a quarter note gets a single beat. Then over here, you have the master volume, which is really important. That's independent of your overall master volume of your track. So this is what this is, is basically the preview volume that's coming out to your, your monitors. So if you have a separate audio interface or something, this will adjust the volume of the audio coming out of your interface. And then you have this button over here by clicking it, it will toggle from outputting in stereo to outputting in mono. So this can be really handy when you're mixing. You want to be able to check your tracks in mono because certain systems like laptop speakers, phone speakers, or certain club systems will actually play your tracks in mono anyway. So it's good to kind of preview that in mono, even though most of the time we are working in stereo and trying to make use of the entire stereo field. Moving over to the left, we have this location here, which actually tells you where the locator or the playhead is. And this is in like bars, beats, and then kind of like ticks. So really, you can get really granular, but it just kind of tells you where you are here in your, in your track where, where it's currently playing. Then over here, you have incoming MIDI information. So this will light up the button on the left. The little left triangle will light up if you, there's any incoming MIDI information from a MIDI keyboard. And then the button on the right will light up if there's any outgoing MIDI information from Studio One being sent to an external synthesizer or something like that. And then last but not least, you have your CPU indicator here, which actually tells you how much CPU processing your current track is using. And when it gets over to the edge there, you'll see it hit red. So I believe the top bar is for your CPU and the bottom is your disk monitoring option. So if you're streaming a lot of samples from your disk or you're using these big sample libraries, that can actually take a toll on your disk and that may let you know that if you want to keep working on this project, you may even have to store stuff in RAM or think about getting something like a solid state drive where you can stream more stuff off the disk rather than waiting on your physical hard drive to be spinning. So hopefully we found that helpful with the transport controls. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching and check out that Discord for more discussion on this. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video.